Zero gravity and being weightless is a rare experience. And for me, it was a roller coaster, not just because of the parabolic arcs of our modified Boeing 727, but due to the highs and lows of my mental and physical health on the two hour flight. If you've ever been to space, you experience what it's like to be weightless. But for us at home, conceptually, you can try to imagine what it's like but you really have to feel it for yourself. Chances are though, you haven't been to space since less than 700 people have in the history of ever. But there is a way to experience zero gravity. However, it costs a pretty penny, about $10,000. I was fortunate enough to win a ticket on this once in a lifetime experience through a Moondow contest. And so I'm going to do my best to walk you through everything from check-in to after the flight. If you look up zero-g flights, you won't find much online aside from cool videos of celebrities and affluent people floating around. But why isn't anyone talking about the vomit aspect of this vomit comet? Of course, not everyone will throw up, but I went from kissing my boyfriend to strapping myself in and so I No, I'm not gonna show you the barf. First off, I do have more common sense than God gave a goose, but I also simply don't have the video. Zero G did take out the ugly parts of the video, so sorry if you wanted to see that for some weird reason. But here are three important takeaways. Zero G is subject to change. A lot of times there are issues with the FAA airspace and this can cause a conflict in your scheduled date for your flight. In fact, our flight was originally supposed to be sometime during the summer. Apparently there was an issue with a pilot shortage. Then it got moved to October, but two days before our flight was rescheduled again due to an issue with the airspace. And even the day of the flight, our flight was moved up two hours earlier because again, there was another issue with the airspace. So if you book this, just be prepared to keep your schedule flexible. Another takeaway is that if you get sick on roller coasters, this probably is gonna suck. I know that I'm prone to motion sickness, whether it be in a car if I'm not driving or on a roller coaster, which some of those roller coasters can have higher G-forces than this flight has. Regardless, I thought that taking the medicine, two doses of non-drowsy Dramamine to be exact, would help quell my sickness, but unfortunately it seemed to do almost nothing. So if you already have an issue with motion sickness and you actually adhere to those signs at amusement parks that say, hey, if you're prone to motion sickness, just don't go on this ride, you probably might wanna save your money on the zero G experience and opt for something else. And the third important takeaway is surprisingly, it's actually not a completely accurate metric of how you would handle going to space. After the flight, I talked to the astronauts about my not so great experience and asked them if going to space should be out of the cards for my future. I shouldn't write off space. Do Absolutely do not. Absolutely do not. <laughs> and if you go, take us with you. They vehemently said, no, of course not. They say that some fighter pilots that do provocative moves in planes have trouble on zero G and some people have trouble on zero G that have no issue in space. So as promised, we're gonna go through the entire day starting at check-in, which was at 5.45 a.m. at the Courtyard Hotel in Titusville. This was convenient because this was the start and end location of the Zero G experience and we decided to stay there. So one of the recommendations that you'll get is to not drive home yourself after the experience. Well, why is this? It can make you very tired. It's not only exhausting if you get sick and puke your brains out, you have a huge adrenaline dump, and yes, I slept for two hours straight right after the flight, and I didn't regret it. In fact, it took a lot of my energy just to get these interviews with the astronauts afterwards, and I knew that I had to hold it together and do this so that I could have a great video for you guys. But seriously, I was not in the best of spirits and all I wanted to do was pass out. 
So we checked in at 545 and at that point you are fitted for your flight suit. This is something that you want to be not too tight so that you can stretch out in different positions in zero G and they give you a pair of socks because yes, they take your shoes away on the plane and you are in socks. So hopefully your feet don't smell that day. After we're fitted for our flight suits, we are given a presentation by the zero G team. And this is a six minute video with some questions and answers in the video, including a description of hypoxia, what it is and what you need to be on alert for. Following that, they encourage you to have a light breakfast and they provide the food. So you're not gonna wanna have orange juice. You're not gonna wanna have something heavy. I actually ended up having half of a bagel with some cream cheese and some apple juice and not to be TMI, but I, did not just exclusively th throw up that. I also threw up uh, dinner from the night before. So that was uh, concerning. And I probably should have gone into the flight with a light dinner the night before, if I'm being fair. The other thing that I think really hindered my experience is that because the flight was moved up fairly last minute, and because I traveled to Florida on little to no sleep the night before and had little to no sleep the night before the flight, uh, I was very sleep deprived. And I think anytime you try to put your body through a stressful experience and you have little sleep in your system, it's, it's just gonna be bad. One of the anomalies on our flight is that by the end of the flight, I counted nine people in the sixth section. And apparently it's usually one person that gets sick statistically every other flight. So that was a little bit concerning to me and surprising. And I asked one of the flight attendants as we were leaving, hey, what happened? He said that our flight trajectory happened to have a lot of turns that day. And we also had a turbulent atmosphere. So I was able to get this flight trajectory animated by Scott Manley. So shout out to Scott Manley. Thank you for making this awesome animation for me. And you can see the three lunar parabolas that we start with. And then you start to see the zero gravity drops, which are much more exaggerated. And finally, you see the turns that we had to make. And interestingly enough, I didn't sense these turns during the flight. So it might have been during the zero G or the G forces. But whatever was happening, it caused me um, a lot of distress. So let's get back to the morning after our check-in and our presentation and a little bit of breakfast. We all got on a shuttle and started to head toward Kennedy Space Center. Our bus was examined during the trip to the airfield where we were taking off from. And this is actually like a normal TSA process. So you can't bring anything that you wouldn't bring on a normal plane. Once we got to the runway and I saw the zero G plane, I was actually getting pretty excited and I was in very good spirits. I had envisioned what this would be like ever since basically May when I won the contest. So this was something that I'd been anticipating for months and months and I was excited to finally see what it felt like in real life. So you are actually assigned a seat. You head up these stairs, go to your seat, put your seatbelt on and get ready to fly. It's it took about 20 minutes, I would say, to take off, and this plane was surprisingly very loud. The G-Force 1 flies in FAA-designated airspace blocks approximately 100 miles long and 10 miles wide. The process starts with the aircraft flying level with the horizon at an altitude of 24,000 feet. The pilots then gradually increase the angle of the aircraft to about 45 degrees relative to the horizon until reaching an altitude of 32,000 feet. During this phase, passengers feel the pull of 1.8 Gs. Next, the plane pushes over the top of the parabolic arc and the zero gravity phase begins. For the next 20 to 30 seconds, everything in the plane is weightless. Finally, the plane pulls out of the maneuver, allowing flyers to gradually return to the floor of the aircraft. The maneuver is flown 15 times over the course of the flight, each taking about 10 miles of airspace to perform. In addition to zero gravity, flyers aboard G-Force 1 experience lunar gravity, which is one-sixth of your weight, and this is achieved by flying a wider arc over the top of the parabola. 
On a typical flight, parabolas are flown in sets of three to five with short periods of level flight between each set. So I actually didn't know about this leveling period going into the flight, but my gosh, I was so thankful to have a little bit of a break in between the arcs, especially once I started to get sick and I was kind of at the point of no return. It was nice to at least have a pause so that I could mentally refocus. So once we took off, it took a bit to get over the state of Florida and into the Gulf area to begin our zero G experience. We were split into two sections and we were supposed to stay in our section for the zero G maneuvers. Now it's important to note that you start laying flat on your back and you want to keep your head as still as possible. This is to minimize sickness. So they tell you to pick a fixed point on the ceiling and then gradually make your way to floating. The idea is that you don't want to do too much too soon and do somersaults and flips right away because your body has to adjust. And strangely enough for me, we started with the lunar parabolas and I was feeling really good. I was feeling confident. I was actually like, wow, you really psyched yourself out and you can handle this and the medicine is working and all is fine. Of course, the lunar parabolas were less intense than the actual zero G's. So I was hanging in there and started to do the one-handed push-ups and fun little maneuvers. Then we went into the zero G and I started to feel a little bit off and decided to just take it easy, try and hold onto the rope and not make too much movement during the parabolas. After about the sixth parabola or so, and you can notice here on the GoPro footage that I disappear at some point, one of the flight attendants came over to me and asked me how I was doing. So I told him that I wasn't sure if I was getting sick, and he suggested that I sit out for one or two of the parabolas. So you go back to the seats, you strap yourself in so you have as little movement as possible, and at that point, it maybe took two minutes and I started barfing. Um, sorry if you're sensitive to that term, but I just, I don't know how else to put it. Uh, so I was supplied with a bag and I was able to experience that terrible human phenomenon in zero gravity and also in almost two G's. So double your body weight, which was not fun. And I started to notice more and more people coming back to that section. In a weird way, it was just the craziest dichotomy juxtaposition of people that were sick, miserable, wanted the experience to end, and then people that were floating around in front of us, going from laying still to absolute chaos. It was actually kind of interesting when I look back just to see the show unfold right before my eyes. But it was also hard to focus on that because of how terrible I felt. So finally, at the last parabola, the flight attendant asked how I was doing. And I said, please make it stop. I just want this to be over. And at that point, they said, actually, we just finished. It's done. So I wasn't feeling too great after that. I was obviously feeling better once the movement stopped and the parabolas stopped but I just wanted to get off of the plane. And truly, I was really bummed by this outcome. I'm super honored that I was able to go on this flight and that the Moondow community voted for me. And as much as I wanna say the experience was seamless and the best experience of my life, part of the reason you guys voted for me is to tell you exactly how I felt and what I experienced. And so I just wanna let you know that, you know, not everyone is gonna have a great time um, if they get sick. And some people are more prone to getting sick. But the bottom line is that either way, I'm so thankful that I had this experience. It truly is a once in a lifetime experience and I will never forget it. And I, I don't regret the experience at all. But I have to say that if you know that you're prone to motion sickness, you might want to consider saving that $10,000. Now, I talked to other people on the flight afterwards, and some people were thrilled. They had no issue. They were smiling from ear to ear, and they were so happy that they got to do it and just had fun spinning and doing all the cool maneuvers that you see people do in the videos. I was bummed that I tried to take it easy, and so I feel like I didn't even get to enjoy the full experience experience of doing the hamster wheel and running around upside down and flips. And so, you know, maybe if I ever get to do it again, I'll take a different kind of medication. Apparently there are stronger medications. I would definitely try to make sure that I get as much sleep as possible. And I would try to not eat 
a big meal the night before. So those are some of my takeaways. Here is some of my advice. And I hope that this video was valuable to you. Again, Zero G is a very professional organization. They do a great job trying to take care of everyone. And even one of the flight attendants actually ended up not feeling well in our experience. So it just shows that not everyone is invincible. It also gives me a tremendous respect for the pilots who are also going through these maneuvers and switching these 30 second intervals from zero gravity to two Gs. I mean, they are staying on top of it and they are flying the plane like champs. It can't be an easy thing to do. And I wish I would have been able to interview the pilot of our flight, but he had to jet <laughs> right after the flight. It also gives me more respect for astronauts and fighter pilots and people that subject themselves to uncomfortable positions and states of being that are actually pretty foreign for us. So again, a huge thank you to Moondao. They were able to send another YouTuber to space on a Blue Origin flight, they were able to send me and Anastasia, the other winner of the Moondao contest for Zero G, on this Zero G flight. And I truly am thankful, but I want to let you guys know sort of more behind the scenes because unless you're doing Zero G flights for research and this is actually your job, or you just have a lot of money and you're able to go on this, I think this is really just not an accessible experience still for most people. And so I hope that. If you can't afford this, you can at least get a better idea of what it would actually be like to go on this flight. So thank you so much for watching this video, truly. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a like. If it was useful to you, please consider sharing it. And thank you so much for watching Ellie in Space.